Yay! Okay, we're live. Hi everyone! Hi! Hi, Kay here and... Alfie. <laughs> You're always late with it. I am. I queue you up and... Everything. Anyway, hello, how have you been? Um, we've had a lovely week. We went away for the weekend, didn't we? To meet some friends mm -hmm. who were over from um, the Netherlands. Hi everyone in the Netherlands. Um, and they have a fantastic shop. And um, they came over to Kent, so we drove down to Kent to meet them, which was lovely. And we went round Canterbury and uh, Chill, Chill Hill, Ham, Chillum. Chillum, Chillum, I think. Which is so pretty. So that was lovely, took the babies with us. Had lots of walks, very hot, kept in the shade. Um, and that's about it really, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. Anyway, so we are back. And um, what am I going to do today? So I'm going to um, have a play with some Vivids. I'm actually going to play with the refills and I'm going to show you um, some colour mixing, which is super easy. And we're going to be using some of our lovely Annalise stamps, which I adore. They are beautiful. And um, do you want to tell them about your... Yeah, so we have a discount on what Kay's going to show you, which is the Vivid uh, Eco Refill. So if you use the code ECO20, um, valid for the next day or so, uh, you'll get 20% off um, from our website. Okay. And uh, like, comment and share for the chance to win an A6 stamp of your choice, uh, four to be one. Cool, that's good, excellent. So shall we get started? Okay. okay. I'll meet right. you over there. Yeah. So here we go. Um, so I'm using the Vivid refills um, because I want to show you some colour mixing and painting with them and stuff like that. And these are the, um, the ones that don't have the sparkle in them. So these are flat matte colours, which is great. Um, they are super, super um, concentrated. So um, one of these will fill one of your pumps, um, but I think it's always worth having a set of these just to use for the inks. So I'm just gonna put them off to one side for a minute. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is prep my journal page. Uh, I've already got it done and dry, but I just want to show you, last week we had loads of bits of um, paper left over from my session and normally I, you know I tidy up afterwards and uh, I thought I'm not going to throw all those away what can I do with them so um, this is is what I did so I got my slap it on mat here and I've got a piece of watercolor card our watercolor card and I'm just slapping it all on and let me just put that off to one side like so and then all I'm going to do is just put this text paper that I had left over onto here so it doesn't really matter which way I'm going with it so if you put it underneath and on top of the paper and I actually usually put it on the paper as well and then you get a really good adhesion and also you get um, a really nice flat surface as well and it just makes a really nice background texture um, because and you know it's better than uh, starting off with a blank page so this is all I did, I just shoved it all on, no particular rhyme, reason or order at all. And I've even left some white bits of the watercolour card left over. And, and that was it basically as a, a background. And then even whilst it's still wet, I'm actually going to put some white gesso over the top so I just want this quite a thin coating and the good thing is that um, with it being already wet with the slap it on it just gives give you a little bit of dilution and so it's not too thick 
Claire says, do you have to read the pages so you can avoid any unfortunate words or phrases? You certainly do need to read the pages, but that's why I always choose. Um, I've got a couple of Harry Potter books that I got from the charity shop, and I've got some, this is Secret Garden. But yeah, you definitely do, because I don't know whether you've heard the story. I was going to say. So the story is that uh, we went to a trade show quite a few years ago in the States and I was doing uh, a quick make and take and I was using gilding flake. Yeah. I did this one. Oh, uh, well, go on then. Let, yeah, let me know. Tell it. Tell the story. <laughs> I'm going to pass it. Pass the mic over to no, you, Alfie. No, 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 no. No, no, no. People will never hear from you, so it's your go. That's my go. It's your go. It's Definitely go. your go. So it was amazing. Um, actually, we were making badges, weren't we? Pin badges. Um, From flitter glue. Using flitter glue and flake. And we were using um, a butterfly stamp onto a book page. And I can't remember what the book page was from. Well, the thing was that we actually had forgotten to bring them. And then the... Um, the, 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 room, the room that we were staying in had a load of old books and they said that we could actually use one of these books so we actually chose I think um, a German book wasn't it, it was an old paperback and You really are No, it was true, it's absolutely true German It, it wasn't in English, that's for sure It was in English because no, the word was very English. It was, but it was obviously in a German book. We're going to carry this argument on. It's yeah. so funny. <laughs> you tell it. So <laughs> Alf is doing this demo with this lady. Well, in fact, they, you teach it, demonstrate it, and then they do it. And um, and she'd finished it, and he made it into a badge for a pin badge, you know, like a, a button badge. And it was absolutely beautiful and lovely. And she looked really closely at it, and right in the middle of the butterfly was this word. And she said, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you would never have managed to get that if you tried. And it actually said... Well, I can't remember that. I'm not going to repeat it. It doesn't bear repeating, but it was a it was it was a swear word. It was a very 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 naughty swear word, something to do with your mother. And um, anyway, yes, you can know. you can you can imagine the next bit. But luckily, she found it hilarious and didn't want to change it. So she said she's going to show her friends. Luckily, she wasn't offended. It was a lovely badge. It was a lovely badge. It was beautiful, darling. You did a brilliant job of demonstrating it. Good. So this is now in my journal. I've just covered up this so it's not um, distracting and it's it's dried. Now, because I've got um, things on the other page which make it a bit bubbly, it's not straight, um, I, I'm not gonna stamp directly on here much, I think. And I'm not even sure what I'm going to do on here. So I'm just going to get a paint mat and put that underneath my page so any dribbles. And then the good thing about these journals is that when the spring bound, uh, sorry, ring bound like this, you can actually just fold the covers back on themselves and then you've got a flat page. Obviously mine isn't flat because as I say, I've got these twiddly bits on. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd actually just mess about with a background and I wanted it sort of monochromatic but that might change you know me so little john let's have a go with a bit of little john on here so you really only need the tiniest amount and i will just bring that down so you can see that there we go so you've just got one tiny blob there and i think what i'm going to do is just wet and brush got a clean brush so none of the gessos left on here which would make that quite opaque whereas oh look at that look at that baby I'm going to put it to the side actually and then you'll be able to see it better there we go that's much better so I don't know what I'm going to do with this sort of maybe dribble some down and see what happens uh, let's add some water to it. JK in Northern California says so it's only 8am and it's already in the 70s. Oh wow! 
<laughs> That's hot. <laughs> yeah, we're what's um what is it in Fahrenheit, Alfie? It's thirty degrees. And um, you know we're British, so we're not used to the the heat at all. Eighty six. Eighty six, and it's seventy degrees, and it's that time in the morning. Good grief! Well, it is hot in California, Northern California, especially, isn't it? Mm. So I've got a few drips going on here. You can't quite see it at the moment because I'm lifting the book up. But let me just show you. So hello to everyone in California. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, yeah, I think I think that's okay. I quite quite like it. And the reason why I'm going for blue is the opposite page was made out of blue. So that's why I'm going for blue. And you'll see when I've finished it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think I like that. So the reason why I hadn't really planned this completely, I've sort of got an idea of where I might go with it, but I wanted you to see my sort of thought processes with it. That's such a lovely colour, isn't it? I mean, that is just delightful. So whilst I've got all of this on here, I'm actually going to... So Tanya's just asked when when uh, might the perfect purple whatever, refill uh, be back in stock. We're just waiting for some bits and pieces from our supplier, um, but hopefully very soon we should have full stock again. So, they've, they've all got COVID at the moment. Yeah, which is holding a lot of things up. And um, so the whole, yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to waste this ink that's on here. So I'm just going to splatter it on there. And that's not a great splatter brush. So let me just get my fan brush because that is a good splatter brush. Where have you gone? It was there a second ago. I have got a new one somewhere. Can't find it, so I'm just going to add some more water. There we go. Yeah, okay, that'll do. So before I carry on, let me just wipe up a few areas and what I'm going to do is rather than waste what I've got on here I'm just going to pick that up with just a piece of watercolour card that I've got a scrap of oh, lovely actually do you know what I could do I could um, let me think about this. So if I pick up some of this ink with my stencil, I could actually stamp with my stencil, couldn't I? So let's see whether that will work. Let's go on here. It may not, there may not be enough ink on there. No, there isn't quite. So, in order to get a bit more ink from this, let's add some more water. Let's douse that in the ink. And then let's bring this back on here. And let's see whether that will that will go on to there. Mm, not as much as I'd like to be honest. But okay, it was it was worth a go. It was definitely worth a go. Okay, so oh, don't want to waste this but I haven't got the time today. <laughs> That's okay, you're not late can always watch it back <laughs> right so on this side I've actually used um, 
blue and I've actually done a horizontal and vertical layout here so I want to do the same on this so either I want to go opposite so have the majority of my color here and here or just mirror what I've just copy what I've done on this side but I think I'm going to mirror it so I'm going to have um, it set out like like that a vertical and a horizontal okay so this is all well and good I'm going to just dry this off a little bit There we go. Okay, so what I'm using is I'm using the Vivid Refills and I'm using just the uh, plain matte ones um, without any sparkling because I want to show you how to mix um, the colours and everything. So um, as I say, I'm going to just stay within these two areas here. So um, this time I'm going to um, grab a stencil. So. Oh, I tell you what, I really quite like this one at the moment. So I want this to be mostly on my horizontal. And I'm going to move this along so that you can actually see my mat here. So I'm going to get a wet brush and I'm just going to do one tiny drop of Little John, which is a blue. So you can see it looks black at the moment, but just add some water and you can see, you will see the blue when I've added more water. Now, I want this to be really quite dark, unlike this background here. So, oh, look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? So when you've got an ink like this, you need something to soak up the colour. So I'm going to use a bit of fat foam and soak up some colour here. And this isn't going to be um, really oops, neat, but I, I don't particularly want it neat because the other side is quite freeing and not, yeah, just not neat. Oh, you see, that's lovely. And look at how it pulls. That's beautiful. So I'm just going to go down this side with this one. So this is going to be like my third layer. And then I'm going to come across and do the horizontal. And it's still quite, um, quite light. So what I need to do is take a little bit of, just one more drop of Little John, the blue, and then if I take a tiny bit of the Sheriff of Nottingham, which is a black, we may need to add a bit more blue, but let's just try that. Oh, look at that. Look at that beauty. Come to mummy. There we go. Look at that color. It's just stunning. And yes, my sponge is quite wet, so it's not going to be really defined, but oh, that's lovely. I love the way you get that all mixing in with it. Now, another thing you can do with this is just let me dry that off again. I'm going to come in with this, which I attempted to get a little bit of texture coming through, but it didn't it didn't give me what I was really after. So again, a little bit of texture here and there, so that you can only just see little bits of it. Let's just blast that. And then if you keep your stencil dirty and your sponge dirty, the great thing is when you add some gesso, because this ink will um, reconstitute. So add water to it 
and it will it will um, re-wet quite nicely so I'm just using some of our lovely white gesso which has got titanium white in it so this is perfect to actually mix with your ink so that you get a really lovely matte finish to it okay so then we can come back in and get yes another layer coming through with this which is really lovely so I'm going to get some white gesso down here there we go and this time I'm going to get a clean sponge because I want a, another layer of uh, of white really going over here I think I'll go back to this other one and just overlay that over the top so that you just get another little layer going on so let me just bring this on here and you can see that you're getting lots of different textures coming through with it and with it being monochromatic it just makes it really really interesting there we go now I think it needs more white over here that's it So you're getting different shades of the blue working through that. So again, let's just get a little bit more on there. I want to work this in here. And here, there we go. Okay, so don't worry, looks a little bit like a dog's dinner but I have got I have got a bit of a plan so I forgot to tell you don't heat your paint mat like this <laughs> because it melts <laughs> um, yeah so that's one wibbly wobbly paint mat completely <laughs> completely gone so um, I'm obviously liking the stenciling today there we go that's good so next stage is to um, just get my credit card um, tool out which is this one and I love putting um, some just plain white lines on so I just dip my credit card in the gesso and then this really helps to define the structure of the page obviously because it's a bit wobbly because of the what I've got on the back of it there we go so this is a lot of this you're not going to see because it's going to be covered up but the bits that you do will look really fab I just this technique is just so one of my favorites it's so simple and so lovely just have horizontal and vertical lines there's something about it that is just so calming and yeah just beautiful and you get the same effect if you do it in black as well because it really really shows up beautifully okay so happy with that that's good just gonna blast it again
There we go. Okay, so let me just put that away. And then another thing I love to do with my gesso is just stamp with it so that you just get, again, a little bit of texture coming through. So if I just grab um, a couple of couple of favourite stamps. Jeannie's just asked what you're using to make the loans. Uh, just a, an old store card, a credit card. So just just a normal credit card. I've just covered it in, in tape. But yeah, just any old card will do. And then if I just grab, um, let's go with Collector's Edition number 22. So this is the Alpha. And I'll just get one of my Slim Jims, uh, Thin Lizzie's I should say, which is our new acrylic blocks, which are fabulous because they're a lot thinner. And then I'm just going to pick up some gesso. And even though it's a little bit on the messy side, I just think it gives such a beautiful, beautiful texture. Julius just over asked, the top. Does the paint bleed through the pages on the journal? No, the paint doesn't bleed through because the uh, these pages are quite thick. I think they're uh, 290. Over 200, yeah. yeah, they're definitely over 200, but they feel really thick and it's watercolour. Um, you know, oh look, I've just spilt it round the back. <laughs> So it hasn't bled through. It's where I actually use the paintbrush over the top. I shouldn't have done that. That's okay. I can I can work with that. So <laughs> I promise it wasn't bled through. <laughs> I'm not I'm not telling fibs honestly. So again, I'm just adding more texture to this. Um the more layers you put on, the more interesting it becomes. So what you need to do is wash this straight away because your um, this gesso is really quite um, good at its job and it sticks to everything. So let me just grab that. Okay, so this is where we're at with it. Now I've so got you, some. You just ask what's the best way to clean gesso from stamps. Um, just cold water and an old toothbrush or a nail brush is really good. I like really thin stamp blocks because um, you can hold them a lot better My, I, i've got rubbish hands so the thick blocks are too heavy and these are quite nice and ergonomic alfie's made them really sort of yeah curved and because they're thin they're lighter obviously but also look at that you get a bend with them so that when you put pressure on them you can really um press on and it will actually bend and move and give you a really good impression as well so it's great for especially big stamps which I used to really really struggle with which is why we brought out the Slim Jims about 10 years ago um, so they worked really nicely I think what I'm going to do it needs some um, some black on this so I'm going to just clean my brush and bring out the black gesso because if you look at the opposite page you can see that I've got some nice depth of colour there so I'm going to get my um, brush cleaned off or even just get a fresh one out and I'm just going to take some of my black gesso there we go and I'm going to use my store card again and I'm just going to emphasize some of those lines that I've already got on the white. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? So we are going to have, um, I think, some stamping across here. 
that I think this is just going to work really beautifully. And you can always use the end as well. If you want just short lines like this, the end of your credit card looks great. Okay. Maybe I should do a stamp like this because it just looks fab, doesn't it? Yeah, you see, there we go. Now we've got the real contrast. We've got all those layers coming through and we've got that contrast there. Okay, that's that's good. So, again, let me just clean up a little bit. Okay, so I've got room to work. And then I think what we'll do is we'll leave that to one side while I do the other bits and then we'll come back to this. So... Hmm? Okay, there you go, Alfie. Thank you. Right, let me just bring in a piece of paper and a mat. And then what I've done is I've got this lovely stamp from Annalise, um, and I'm going to use her. And I want it, um, again, to really be quite blue to go with the rest of the page. And I'm going to use the smallest things in life that bring happiness, I think. Um, but just so that you know, this font is the wrong font that it actually is. So I've already stamped it and um, clear embossed it. So that's what we're working with there. And I've already stamped this beauty and cut her out. Now I've actually um, used uh, black Versafine to stamp her out. In fact, I'll show you stamped out because she is so lovely. Um, it's just that my hands are filthy after messing about now. And I'll just get a thin Lizzie, pop her on there. And as you can see, they're already cut out for you and they're on a, a cling mount as well. So I'm just going to use um, this fine black, which is one of my favourites. I could of course use the blue if I was going for that blue theme, but I think it does need to be black. So I'm just going to put plenty of this on. Obviously you can use any other ink pads that you've got. I just happen to like Versafine because it really shows off the beautiful line work of our stamps because um, you can get really good thin lines and dots. And of course red rubber is the top of the tree when it comes to quality because they'll last you a lifetime if you look after them. So I'm just going to use the heel of my hand because as I say I don't use my fingertips because they're not strong so and you're not going to get much pressure so the easiest way is to actually use the heel of your hand and just lean over the top especially if you're a sitting down crafter okay and then you get this beautiful impression. So this is on a, a textured watercolour card. So even on a textured watercolour card, you get that really lovely look to it. And then um, what I've done is I've actually used a super fine clear embossing powder. And I like to use this because one, it makes the line glossy and that really shows up the detail of the design, which is lovely. And two, it also um, acts as a barrier for when you're colouring in. So you can see how much more vibrant that line is now. That black is really, really black, so it looks fabulous. So I've got her ready here. Now I wanted to show you how to um, do some mixing and colouring. So I might just get a fresh piece of paper underneath her so that you can see the colours. And yeah, you can see that. Okay, so we've got Little John, which is the blue. 
we've got Loxley yellow which is obviously the yellow let me just bring that down I'll turn it around there we go so you can see that and you can see you need the tiniest drop of the ink because again like most things we make these super super concentrated in fact you know talking to um, an ink manufacturer um, they were saying you know how much to um, make make them up and I was putting about four times as much in I was just like no no it's not vibrant enough I want it really really vivid so we've got Will Scarlet and as you can see they all look black at the moment because they are just so incredibly um, Alan Adele that's it they're, they're just so strong okay so first of all I'm just going to use um, a little brush I don't know where my other one's gone but there we go that'll do and I'm going to use some clean water because you don't want um, any gesso left in your water at all so first of all um, obviously this is your yellow which is the Loxley yellow which is beautiful uh, vibrant primary color so this is really obviously really easy to use with your sunflowers and as you can see you don't need to be terribly accurate with this because the the line work holds in the wet color now if I come in now where did I put Will Scarlet there we go so if I take some Will Scarlet it's already got yellow on take some of that Loxley yellow and we get this vibrant beautiful orange which we can just put over the top and just mix that in so you get this really sumptuous color a bit more yellow on there and a tiny tiny bit more of the red and look how that just layers because they're transparent these inks you can layer them one on top of the other which looks lovely so even if you started with that red and you went round those areas of the sunflower and you think wow that's a bit ham-fisted so you come back with your Loxley yellow and it will renew it which is really lovely now this one is a bit too dark so what I'm going to do is just get um, paper tissue and dab it and add a little bit more water and then dab it again and then it takes it back and knocks it back for you so that you can just go back to the yellow and I'll do the same with that can you see and then we can add the yellow on the top and then what will happen is it'll start to move that lovely red and soften the edges so can you see that happening you can just bring your water pot in so people can see the water and you can see there you how go often you... yeah see how often I'm, I'm dipping that in i'd say quite quite often and then this one in the middle I think I will take that back a little bit see you've got more vibrant yellow in the middle and you get a lovely orange mix around the outside which is beautiful now if you wanted to take this lovely red which let me just get some water on that you can see how beautiful that is if you wanted to make that darker you can add black to this and that will make it a darker red so what you need to do is just take a tiny little bit of that red and then a minute amount of the black and then you get a more maroon red coming through okay this is really nice because this is that beautiful blue which is just absolutely stunning 
and I'm going to actually do the roses in in this blue so I'm not being very accurate at the moment and I'll show you why I'm just doing the centers so I'm just gonna wet my brush dab off a little bit and then work my way around these blue roses so that you get a darker center and you get a lighter round the edge because again you can renew it as it were isn't that lovely and don't worry that I've gone on those, over those leaves either you'll see why in a moment Now what you can do is if you're traveling and you just want to take a tiny little project with you, you can almost use these like watercolors with the me translucent. You can actually put these dots of color on and then let them dry out naturally and then take it with you. And then all you do is just add water to it and it will regenerate again. So I've got this lovely blue, which I'm going to put a little bit down here. And then I'm going to clean my brush in order to pick up some of that lovely Loxley yellow. And then I get this amazing emerald green. So if I use some of this emerald green on some of these leaves, like so, uh, let's do a couple over here. But then I think actually what I do want is to have a much lighter yellow. You just take that yellow and add that to a tiny bit of the green. And then you get from a fresh green almost to a lime. So if I was to add even more, see how you get that sort of lime look of green. So all of a sudden you've got all these beautiful different greens with which to do those. I've just realized I've left out one of these lovely sunflowers here. Obviously I would take a lot more care over it um, than normal because I'm sort of splashing it on at the moment. Right, and then um, you can carry on adding more yellow until you just get a very very light lime color which is beautiful now also you can take this red and add some of the blue and you will get first of all a navy see this lovely navy color which i'll probably use just in the centers of these roses just to give me a little bit of a, a deeper shade in there. But if I use more red, I'm going to get a much deeper, in fact, I've, I've sort of jumped a few stages and put a lot of red in there. You get this lovely warm brown. Look at that, it's like a maroon brown, which is gorgeous. So I've sort of jumped through the violet stage and then you have um, this beautiful, beautiful orangey red color as well. So you're going to get a completely different look if you mix that blue with this and you get olive. Oh, look at that olive. It's just stunning, absolutely stunning. Now what I'd recommend is when you're mixing these colors, just put it into your notebook I have a little sorry about moving the camera I have a little notebook that I use for uh, mixing colors and just experimenting with different colors and gessos and just so that I can see all the different ways in which you can mix so that's always really useful to do as well but that olive green I think is just delightful really delightful 
so what did I put here oh yes right so this is Robin Hood so this is a teal color isn't that gorgeous so again we can come around and we can add some of that teal green so to this just come in the six colors no they don't um, we have two four six eight ten ten of the matte colors and we also have ten of the sparkly colors which have mica in them and also pigment so you've got 20 colors in total um, so again with this teal you're going to get a completely different look if you mix some of that blue along with the teal and if I add even more blue to that you can see you're getting into like an ocean blue which is just beautiful so that's the, this is why I use really good quality pigments because then you get nice beautiful clean colors um, and then we have this green mix it with the teal green and you have something quite different again which is really lovely and that's just using um, what five colors most of them are actually using the Loxley yellow the Will Scarlet and the Little John which is those three colors there so this is where I've got to with this using the different greens a couple of different blues and those orange and reds mixed in together and I might just pick up some of these little buds here that you get I love the detail of her work it's just really beautiful so I just want to show you how to do her hair or one of the ways so I really like this technique of just wetting the hair and keep away from the face and the shoulder and just wet all this area and you'll be able to even though you can't see it on camera you will be able to actually see how the water is just staying within those channels of the line work <clears throat> excuse me and it's just not not moving it's just staying within those but then when you add color now I think I'll keep um, mm, should I keep the blue theme and go with the blue background blue hair Alfie, what do you reckon? No. No? You don't want me to give her blue hair? No. Really? Okay. I did ask the question, didn't I? So I shouldn't, I shouldn't worry about the answer. Mm, okay. All right. I won't then. I won't give her blue hair. I will go with, um, how about original oak? He says go on. Who says go on? D. D. Thanks, D. Let's see. She might disappear into the background after I've done this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the blue here and here. Just a neck there. So Yvonne says, sorry if you've already said, but are they translucent? They are translucent, yes, they're translucent inks. So I should have used a smaller brush really. And then I'm going to just use wet wet water. Um, I'm just gonna use wet water. Yeah, I'm just gonna use water just to make that move a little bit. Normally it moves on its own, I think because it's so hot in here, it's just drying off. There we go, it's moving a bit now. And it will just flow down these channels and some of the areas will remain white and I'm just going to leave that because I really I really like that I think we'll have a little bit of depth here in the background Duke and Daisy have joined us in the studio there we go just so that you get these lovely channels of color coming which is just 
really lovely and then you get areas of white which give you that lovely highlight I might just extend that a little bit and I love the way she's put those pretty flowers in her hair as well right so I'm not going to give a blue skin <laughs> you'll be pleased to hear Alfie <laughs> I'm going to uh, I'm going to use some of our matte paints okay porcelain and medium beige so first of all I've noticed that I've got um, I've got a little bit of blue on the neck there so I'm just going to wet that it would have helped if I cleaned my brush first and just dab that away So I'm going to use, I think, medium beige. So just a tiny bit of medium beige. Uh, I just want some clean water rather than this here, which is greeny blue. So I'm just going to add quite a bit of water. The paint mat. Okay, so I'm just going to again just let the edges of the line work because it's got the clear embossing powder on it it's going to help keep it within the lines so the skin tones we've got we've got a full range of skin tones um, I'd already had some really nice beautiful deep um, colors some lovely warm um, red base browns um, so I always always already had those in our arsenal so those are called uh, hot cocoa and leather corset so we've already got those and then the lighter tones we didn't have so I've got um, porcelain fair medium beige and warm tan so I'm going to just cover virtually all of her face in three minute warning gosh really I've taken far too long over this one haven't I what where's the time gone it's like gosh I hope you're not bored um, okay and there's my clean water there we go so what you can do is you can put water on first and let it just smooth smooth in and find its own way which is really cool and I'm just going to use a teensy weensy bit whoops of porcelain and this is going to give me my highlights okay so lots of water again with this and I'm just going to put a little bit on a forehead here and a cheeks and a nose just so that that blends in and gives her a little bit of a, a highlight there um, when you're doing the the lipstick and the cheeks oh that's very orange we don't want that let's use a really really um, diluted red I would normally make it a bit more pink but then get yourself a, a tissue and just dab a little bit of color on her cheek and then dab it away and that way you're just building up the color really slowly Poor dogs are too hot today. Duke is black, so he really feels it. And a little bit on her lips. And I'm rushing this because of the time, but that gives her a little bit of a, a nice flush. Okay, so if I could take my journal back, please, Alfie. Oops, and I pass you that, that's lovely, thank you so see she does look all right actually with um with blue hair max has asked can i use a vivid on material 
You can use vivids on material, but they're not permanent. Uh, use our translucent paints instead. Those are permanent and they're uh, on a fabric base. But um, these are um, these inks are not permanent. They will just wash out. Um, okay, so this is going to go here and here. So what I like to do is um, build up a little. Do you know what? Actually, I was I've got all of these bits of fabric out and stuff like this, and I don't know whether I'm going to need it. If I do, just do a little bit of um, stamping. I think that might be it, especially seeing as we haven't got any time left at all. Julie's asked, can you use the mica we ink us in the same way? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course you can. Yes. That would that would work really, really well. So I'm just scrubbing around for seeing um, if I've got... Where should I put my other load of stamps? Did you take them for me? Um, oh, they're here. Sorry, beg your pardon. So let's see. Um, we could use that. Um, we could use that, which is possibly that one. Okay. So I had sort of planned to put um, ribbon and lace and all kinds of stuff along here. But I don't think mm, it might need it anyway. So because we've run out of time, I'm just going to do some free stamping. So I don't want the whole of this stamp in. I'm just going to place a corner of it on the ink pad and I'm just going to give myself a little bit of um, broken broken stamping and then turn your stamp around and just use your hands instead of your Slim Jim and just it's quite serendipitous so that you just see see what happens see a really really like that um, this that one is um, circle dots and these are all the collector's edition uh, this one is number 24 and this is purely just called dots and this you do have to have sort of straightish because yeah just one of those I think will do and I love the numbers so this is the matrix number 49 and again I really really love this so that's going to go a little bit there a little bit there and maybe a little bit there how are we doing on time Alfie I'm a well over I ran out two minutes ago so what I will do is I will post this when I've finally finished it and I found my words and I'll put those on and I'll post it on on the Facebook page and I think that will go go okay with the opposite page you see because that was all sort of blues and I've just sort of uh, you know mirrored that sort of feel to it I've used completely different textures um, and techniques but I just think that that will go will go all right won't it yes thank you so much for joining us make sure that you um, like comment and share um, and of course your discount code which is eco20 thank you so much for joining us um, lots of love to everyone hi everyone in the states thanks for joining us as well uh, bye for me and bye for me and bye for Melfi bye